It's usual for me to do long distance flights due to my job as a businessman and working in international relationships. I have to travel to other cities almost every week and to another country at least once or twice a month. When you have to do the same thing over and over, you get used to it. Whether I have to travel to Malaysia, Switzerland, or the United States, for me it's completely natural. I mean, of course, it is normal to feel exhausted after a long flight, and more than once I felt bored as hell, but... Well, that's just how it goes. In this specific time that I'd like to tell you about, I was traveling from the United States to Spain. My departure was from Miami, therefore the flight would be a long one, with no stops. Just a little over 12 hours. The whole thing was very standard. We entered the plane, sat down, and this time something cool happened. There was nobody next to me, which meant I had all three seats to myself. So, I sat in the best seat, next to the window of course, in order to observe the beautiful view of the ocean. The flight took off on time, and once the landscape of the city was no longer there, and we were between the clouds, I grabbed my laptop and started working, trying to memorize some things for my presentation in Madrid. As I was working on my speech, my eyes began to feel a little tired so I decided it was time to take a rest. I put my things inside my backpack and got ready to sleep. Now, when I try to sleep on a flight, I normally look through the window. I just find this very therapeutic. It always helps me fall asleep in a matter of minutes. It's sort of like counting sheep, I guess. And so there I was looking at the beautiful blue skies. And my mind was so relaxed, I was about to fall asleep my eyes had even begun to close, but they were still open enough to see, when suddenly I saw something very fast flying by the plane. I couldn't identify what it was. All I could see was this black-like long figure. As soon as I saw it, I opened my eyes as much as I could and looked closer to see if it was still there, but of course it wasn't. This thing really managed to scare me. It looked as if it were flying exactly towards my window, and I tried to figure out what the thing was. It couldn't have been anything too dangerous because we're fine, so I figured it must have been a bird or something like that. Although I'd never seen a bird that high up in the sky before, but, well, I guess everything's possible, or so I thought. I decided to look through my window for 10 more minutes, but when nothing else happened, I just relaxed, closed my eyes, and drifted to sleep. When I woke up from my nap, the first thing I noticed was that there was someone sitting next to me. My eyes sometimes get blurry after sleeping, so it took me a little bit of time to properly see this person. It was a woman, around her 40s maybe. She was skinny and tall sort of like a runway model. She had very fair skin and jet black hair. She was also wearing a long black dress with sleeves that covered pretty much everything. Soon after, she noticed I was looking at her. She turned to look at me too. Her face, very unique. Her features were strong and long. I could tell she was not young, but she didn't look ugly at all. There was something about her and her very big black eyes that made her look somewhat attractive. Sorry, I didn't mean to disturb you, she said to me. I sometimes get bored, and the only way to kill time is to find someone to talk to. Well, I hope you don't mind. I just like moving around quite a lot. Ah, oh, not at all. Uh, these seats are free anyway, so feel welcome, I politely said to her. On top of having a very interesting appearance, her voice was very unique as well. Although her English was flawless, I did have a hard time trying to figure out her accent. Her voice was very deep and slightly seductive. She sounded as a movie character more than a real person, and because of all this, I asked her if she was famous, and she laughed when I told her this. No, not many people get to see me. Very selective, trust me, she said. 
and I found that statement weird, but I didn't ask her any more about it. We talked for a little while, but our conversation was mainly small talk. A little bit about the flight, a little bit about the weather, you know, stuff like that. And the more we talked, the more curious I felt about her. So I went on ahead and asked her about her nationality. But once again, she didn't give me a concrete answer. Oh, I'm from here and there, she said. And I normally get annoyed when people try to be mysterious. But this lady was so intriguing, I couldn't help but thinking she was flirting with me. The way she talked, the way she looked at me, and of course the fact that all the seats she decided to be in was the one next to me. So I just kept talking to her. Now after a while of talking to her, I started feeling dizzy. I can't explain why, but I just felt as if everything around me was spinning. Nothing was clear. In fact, the only clear thing I could see was actually her face. I tried to act normal, but... I'm pretty sure that she knew I wasn't feeling good. And despite all this, the mysterious woman next to me kept talking as if nothing was going on. I, however, remained quiet, as it was getting harder for me to put words together. Are you feeling ill, Ken? She asked me. Between my dizziness and confusion, I knew there was something weird going on because we never exchanged names. And afterwards, it just kept getting stranger and stranger. It was as if this person was inside my head. Yes, I do know your name. Ken Tremblay. I knew more than you think. You always present yourself with a superficial image. Ken, the businessman, the professional. But you never show who you really are inside. So people don't know much about you. But I do know, and there's nothing good to see. You're just a shallow person who has nothing to offer. Someone who's not worth it, she said as her voice started to sound aggravated. But that's not it. Her exotic yet beautiful face turned into something else. Something darker, something scarier. Her face was now thinner and longer. It resembled the shape of a goat. Her eyes turned completely black. There was not a glimpse of shine left, and her skin was now wrinkly and full of imperfections. I was feeling scared. I could feel my heartbeat rising faster, and I tried to scream, but no words were coming out of my mouth. I tried to move my arms to press the button that calls the flight attendant, but I wasn't strong enough. And all of a sudden, everything turned darker, and she was coming closer. Don't be afraid, she said in between laughs as she came close to me. Then her face was right in front of mine, and she pressed her disgusting lips against me. It lasted less than five seconds, and when it was all finished, she was no longer there. Neither was the darkness around. Everything looked completely normal, and there were no traces of anything weird that could have happened. I was also feeling my strength returning, and my body was no longer failing on me. But I was extremely nervous, and I could still feel my heart beating a hundred miles an hour. I then unbuckled my seatbelt and asked the person on the closest seat where the lady was who was sitting next to me. The person told me that they hadn't seen anybody. I went ahead and asked another couple of people, and both of them said the same. I could tell they had no idea what I was talking about, and the people around me looked at me as if there was something wrong with me. But I bet that's how it seemed. I was agitated and completely covered in sweat. It didn't take long before a flight attendant came and asked me if everything was okay. I proceeded to ask her about the lady in black, but she replied the same as the others. Sir, I haven't seen anybody with those descriptions on board, and of course the seats next to you have been empty this whole entire time. I'm afraid I don't know what you're talking about. And when she said that, I started freaking out. 
I could barely breathe. I don't remember anything else from the flight. I just have vague memories of a couple of the flight attendants helping me to calm myself down as the flight progressed. The next thing I actually remember is waking up in some sort of emergency room at the airport while I was being treated by a nurse. She called an ambulance and eventually I was taken to the hospital. Now at the hospital they told me I had a panic attack due to stress. And because of it, I had to postpone my meeting in Madrid and a few other things. I stayed in Madrid for about a week and a half before returning to Miami. Of course, at first I was nervous to fly, but then I started thinking it all made sense. It must have stressed my mind to fabricate such odd things, and perhaps it was all part of a very scary dream. I mean, after all, Monsters are not real. Or so I thought. Anyways, in order to prevent any other random meltdown, I was medicated during the flight and accompanied by my assistant who traveled to Europe just to bring me back to the States with her. As expected, the flight was okay. Uh, the problem, however, started about a week ago. Whenever I went out, I saw something weird flying up the distance, something similar to what I saw that day at the airplane, the long black figure in the sky. And the first couple of times I saw it, I felt stressed because it reminded me of that day, but I'd simply just ignore it and keep going on with my life. However, a couple of days ago, everything became more drastic. Every time I went outside, I not only saw the figure. Whenever the figure appeared, the sky got dark. Although, I'm the only person around who seemed to notice this. Now it's been two days since I've locked myself in my home, I'm completely afraid to go out. I'm sure now that the figure I always see flying in the sky is her, the lady in black. I don't go out because I'm afraid I will be seeing her face again, but that's not the worst thing. The reason that drove me to write all of this is that today when I woke up and I went to the bathroom, I noticed something in the mirror. I look absolutely ravaged, haggard, and devastated. As if someone would have drained all my youth and health. I'm not writing this for help because I'm afraid nothing and no one can help me. I'm sure she will eventually come for me sooner than later. I'm writing this to let you know exactly what happened. I don't know who this lady is or what she is, but what she said in the flight is true. I haven't been the best person on earth. In fact, I haven't even tried to be good at all never cared for others, not even my own family. I've never been kind. I haven't done anything good, and for that, I think she's punishing me. I just wish it wasn't too late to change, but the truth is, if I wasn't in this situation, I wouldn't consider changing. <laughs>